the image really does tell you what it wants to be. And I think uh, good colors respect that and, and have a healthy respect for that. And hopefully there's a really good relationship between that DP and the colorist. <laughs>
uh, most, most of the new technologies have definitely helped and improved the expediency of the process. What we're doing is an extension of what you're doing on set by when you are flagging that light or scrimming this or throwing one of those scrims in a light or we're trying to get all those light ratios working just so with your light meters and, and when you don't have the time to do it as well as you'd like to, because those cameras, the ARRI or any of these cameras are shooting 14 stops of dynamic range with lots of contrast that's available there, lots of stops of visible delineation between light, in the DI room then, you as a, a DP can say, you know what, knock that down a little bit. You know, that's a hot spot on his forehead. I didn't see, I couldn't get off, he was moving, it was impossible to get. I can do it faster and better than you could do it on set, and it's an extension of what you wanted to do. This is critical. Yes. This is critical. Because a lot, a lot of the time, you know, if you have the whole package, mm -hmm. then if you use my theory, or Ansel Adams theory about mm -hmm. the images created in the dark room, mm -hmm. if you whole, have the whole capture there, mm -hmm. It's basically the zone system Absolutely. And s on steroids. Yes. Uh, whereas with ProRes 422 or ProRes 444, which are not even as much of a problem now mm -hmm. as they used to be because right. of the compression issues, Yeah. it's almost better to shoot everything in RAW. Yeah, um, it, every, there are always exceptions to the rule, and like, you know, but absolutely, generally, um, uh, pay, uh, the payloads are bigger, more information that you can capture, and the least processing that you can capture on set and be able to give more artistic control to the darkroom so that you can really control that, how it's going to be for final on your canvas, the better you are. That's what frightens cinematographers is that that gives more power to the studio, the producer, and the director. This space is as political mm -hmm. as uh, the space between myself and the director on the set. Sure. Uh, and what is incredibly critical is to develop a relationship with a colorist because oftentimes you won't be there. Mm -hmm. And so that, that when the director or a producer or um, a post-production supervisor says, I don't want it that way, I want it this way, that at least we get a call mm -hmm. from our colorist that says mm -hmm. this is what's going on so that we at least have a chance mm -hmm. to participate sure. because oftentimes once we've captured the image, they would prefer us just go away. Yeah. And uh, uh, I've not had that experience yeah. personally. Uh, generally, people like for me to be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, there are those that don't. And I, I find that, the, that if you have a friend mm -hmm. in, in the colorist, yeah. uh, then, then it's, it's a much safer environment. And it's even more of a reason to shoot raw because, it, frankly, even if you, you balance the light perfectly, yeah. there's so much range now yeah. than there was with film sure. that y even putting the, a proper single in or proper double in yeah. or proper shading, there's always something that, that's yeah. that green in the background sure. is a little stronger than right. it should be. And you can, um, you can do a power window on something that, that mm -hmm. I could have never done. Sure, absolutely. And I, and I would say that ultimately, that the, why r more information in RAW is definitely good uh, and is preferable than the non-RAW sources formats. It doesn't mean that you truly are any less creatively limited generally when you're shooting like, and a good example is Airy Raw or ProRes Log C. And a lot of, and, and technically Airy Raw is more information and, and but is generally only used on much bar larger budget films because the data payloads are much bigger. Um, and it's really good for a visual effect sequences. But even on $10 million films, shooting Log C on ProRes 444 or XQ or like that, yields you just as really good of results and as much latitude. Yeah, in elementary we were using ProRes 422. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, oftentimes uh, I find it's 422 or 444 and never uh, never raw. I always on features, I always do raw. Yeah. Uh, just because I, I feel it's, it's safer. Uh, we're working so fast these days mm -hmm. uh, that there's things that you can definitely do that, that, that would take me much more time. But if you really, uh, a filmmaker, yeah. then you shouldn't care. Yeah. You should rather have as many options as uh, possible. Right. It gives more power to the director, too, ultimately. And uh, um, it's not, sh I believe the image tells you what he wants to be based on really how you captured it in light. Everything that's in front of the sensor, from the lens to the lighting, that's never going to change, mm -hmm. truly. The image really does tell you what it wants to be. And I think 
uh, good colors respect that and, and have a healthy respect for that. And hopefully there's a really good relationship between that DP and the colorist. So he's helping to just realize that vision and helping to extend, like, and here's a good example of that. You're on set and you're moving quickly. Time is always the other essence. You've got 100 people working around there and you would wish to have more time to tweak, to flag this, light off of that. Um, you know, you've got a hot spot right here or put a little more, another little light there and pop that up a little bit more because what you're trying to do is take, in real life, this high dynamic range amount of, which is just a lot of light and, and squeeze it box. down and fit it into <laughs> something you can actually capper, capture on some celluloid right. or essentially on a file, okay, digitally. Especially for a cinematographer like myself who is always shooting the dynamic uh, contrast ratios. Yes. It's uh, it's critical to know how far you can go right. uh, into that into sure. the white or the clipper as we used to call right. it, right? Or, or into the pedestal of the black. Uh, I mean, I like to say that it's ulti uh, part of my job and is, is an extension of what the DP did on set and, and managing dynamic range. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a big part of it, of course, and helping get you what you want. And once you've approved that color, whether whatever device it is, whether it be in a theater or on a mm -hmm. TV monitor. Ultimately, it's been my job using technology as well as your eye to help make sure that translate across the all, all delivery platforms. So I try not to, or I hope it doesn't make it more complex for you at all, and it really shouldn't. It's basically, it's your vision on the screen um, and, and, and all devices exactly the same was within the realms of what that device is able to reproduce. Mm -hmm. So this is obviously something you know something about. <laughs> And uh, what's exciting about it is that it, it means that we can expand upon this. Yeah. We, can, we can begin with, with simplistic uh, observations so that uh, a, a young filmmaker right. uh, will, will understand what ACES is and how it's different from uh, the, the previous uh, uh, color space mm -hmm. technologies. Yeah. And we can actually uh, uh, discuss how to, how to paint uh, uh, a complicated or difficult shot. Sure. And so... Uh, I'm hoping that this is just the beginning of a beautiful relationship, to quote uh, Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> uh, and uh, so uh, until uh, we meet again, thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you. <laughs>